I'm Rebecca Lawrence and I'm part of Mama Jumbo Shrimp. We're a group of wine professionals who are trying to share our passion for wine and give you some new skills. Unfortunately, we also like cocktails. So, with this series, what we wanted to do was make it easy for you to make wine cocktails at home. So we've chosen a series of cocktails that use some form of wine that you can make with four ingredients or less. Some will be classics, some will be twists on classics, and some might be completely new to you. Before we start, I wanted to say a little something about bar equipment, because there is lots of specialist equipment that you could buy. So shakers or mixing glasses, strainers, tongs, jiggers, barware such as glasses, do you need coupes, rock glasses, flutes, wine glasses? Yes, you can invest in all of those things, but it's important to remember that really it's your ingredients you should invest in. Because if you make a really great drink, you can shake it in a jar and pour it into a mug and it's still going to taste really great. So just bear that in mind before you run out and start investing in loads of crazy equipment. Have a try at home first and decide which are the best pieces of equipment that you actually need. Are you making things that are shaken? Probably not all the time, so maybe it would be better to get a mixing glass. In the end, the choice is up to you. But I will say, there's one piece of equipment that I've invested in and that I love and even travel with, and that's my jigger with all the different measurements in. A little bit expensive, yes, but you only need to buy one for every single drink and your ratios will be perfect. So if you're going to be making a lot of wine cocktails, perhaps one of the things that you should learn first is how to open a bottle of sparkling wine, because let's face it, they're going to be in a lot of your drinks. So let's start. First of all, make sure that your bottle is well chilled. You can see that this has been in uh, the fridge for quite a while. Get it nice and nice and cold. That'll keep the pressure under control. Okay, so we're gonna take our bottle and to give me some extra friction, I'm just gonna wrap it like this and then remove the foil. This we don't need. Okay. So keeping uh, your finger on top of the cork so that you don't risk any explosions, getting cork in someone's face, and then just release the cage ever so slightly. Some people like to remove the cage completely, and that's fine if that's how you're comfortable, but I like to leave the cage on so that I get a little bit more friction when I'm trying to release the cork. Okay, so then we're gonna turn the bottle to 45, 30 degrees, and the key here is to twist the bottle, not the cork. Okay. The idea is to keep some pressure on the cork so that you just get a nice little pop rather than an explosion. So you're trying to ease the cork out nice and gently. There we go. And we're done. Now you're ready to make a drink.